Welcome to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. I am your co-host, Samira Smith. I'm here with my always awesome co-host, Joshua Meekins, and we have a very, very special episode for you this week. Josh, you know, um, you, you, you intro our guest today, because I feel like you have like a unique fandom going on. Yeah, it was, it was kind of crazy. Um, this introduction happened at Roots Picnic, so Roots Picnic has been doing a lot for us since then. Mm -hmm. um, I'm at Beats and JJ backstage, and they told me they had a friend, Armani, who was coming out, and that I'm, I may have heard of him. I walk up to this man. This man, Armani White, is notoriously known right now for his song, Billie Eilish. That's yes, going sir. crazy right now. Yes, sir. Over three million views and streams and listens. It's, it's looking, whoa, 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 whoa. It's close to four million. Oh, close to four, <laughs> four man. Million. Listen, close to four. And we, we looking at like 30 million on streams. Okay, oh, okay, yeah. okay. We just got to get the numbers. No, no, right. make sure the numbers are correct. Hold us, hold us accountable, my friend. It's only been a month and a couple of weeks or something. We love that. We love to see that, man. <laughs> but um, I, straight off the rip, when I, when I got a chance to talk to you for a little bit, you were genuine. Your energy was great. Absolutely. You know, we wanted to make sure we, we made something happen. So without a doubt, you know, the first thought was making a podcast happen and getting to know more about you and your craft. Yes, sir. So uh, without further ado, to the audience, we have Armani White. Big Blanco. Big Blanco. <laughs> love it. <laughs> so we always, we always start off the show with um, a, a self-introduction. So we give you, a give you a chance to tell us who you are. And how do you define what you do? It's the biggest of Blancos, man. I'm a philosopher. I'm a ventriloquist. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a vegan. I'm a <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, like you know, I'm I'm an artist. I'm a I'm a you know like visual and um, yeah, visual and verbal painter, I guess mm -hmm. more or less. And uh, and I just look for different ways to kind of keep creating you know, things in my head and bringing those things in my head to real life, whether that be on songs, on videos, and on merch, or on, you know, whatever it is. But just, like, I'm a vessel, bro. Like, I, you know what I mean? For me um, to believe in things and, and make these things happen, but for other people to see what I'm doing and think, like, oh, shit, like, that's actually possible. I'm a vessel, you know what I mean? So you're a videographer, too? Or you just I actually do your did. I used to I used to run with a camera like a long time ago, but I used to I used to do it a little bit. Like my first ever video, <coughs> um, my first ever video that like got a little bit of numbers was this video stick up. We shot it in West, um, and I had my homie record it. We like uh, we bought this. We bought a little rig and it, we broke it the same day. So we had uh, <laughs> <laughs> we took a tripod and we put a weight on one side of the tripod and then we just carried it like like he had somebody stand behind him and just yeah. like direct him where he was going. And then I took that video, bought it back on Final Cut, and I edited it, colored it, and all that myself. Wow. Um, and then we dropped it, and it got like, that was like my first little bit of like my introduction to the music industry, I guess. But yeah, yeah. like I do, I did everything. <laughs> wow. So yeah, that, well, that means you know how to hire people because then you'll be like, no, I know what I'm doing. So my I need you to me, be better than me. My uncle told me, no, always know 50% of what you're willing to pay somebody 100% mm -hmm. to know. So. Uh, I just try to learn everything. Like it, it, it's, it's time consuming. Like a motherfucker, I wouldn't recommend it. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I just try to l at least have an understanding. So like you said, like because I just I don't want to be that person. that's trying to be helpful with my suggestions, but I don't know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, if you could just turn the dial up the nod and make a little bit of tweak the, the yeah, and like <laughs> they're like, what the fuck is he talking about? Like you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be one of them type boys. So I was like, let me just understand it you know what i mean yeah. let me just let me sit down and learn it let me learn the language let me learn uh you know just like what does what and yeah, I, yeah. I did the same thing with pro tools i did the same thing with um i just let one of them annoying ass kids over your shoulder mm -hmm. like yo what's mm -hmm. this thing do like you, you know what i mean yeah. so um yeah <laughs> so all, all your art is in support of the music now if someone mm. was to ask you armani you know what is your genre what would I make you happy hood music <laughs> that's actually I like beautiful. That. I, I like happy that. hood music. It's it's still it, you know it's still hood. It's still from the same um the same grungy city that everybody else makes this uh, hood music from. But it just takes a different tone, and it's like you know I have a lighter energy, and um I don't know like just because my the root of um inspiration for me is always like when I'm in a really dark place, I can only write bright music mm. because I can only think mm. about where I want to be and not where I'm at. You know what I mean? So, um, like, a, like a, I had this one song. I don't even remember the name of it, but the, I just remember writing, having fun, top of the paper. But uh, my uncle had just got uh, murdered. And um, I remember when I got the news, I wrote that song. And then I left. I left, like, a, maybe a year later, my um, my father told me he had cancer. And I left. Wow. And, I, like, I ran out the house. I went to my homie's crib. Uh, we made this song called um, Rewind. This song, uh, 
that went on and got like 20 million and some streams or whatever and like they took me on tour with it but uh but wow. these both of these songs was just like really like you could listen to you could still listen to rewind on on you know social spotify or whatever but um they all just bright ass songs because i was in a really dark place and that's all i could think about was like i want to be happy again mm. i want to be you know what i mean so um yeah, happy hood music. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even with a bunch of different artists, like we talk about all the time, like your expression, and to think about like you being in a place of of, of darkness where most people would absorb into that, yeah. to be able to find the light in that and to be able to tell your story from mm-hmm. those pieces is beautiful to even mm-hmm. kind of create that. Because most people get blocked. When um, how old were you when you? Well, maybe not how old because you might not want to talk about age. But <laughs> like, what? How long have you been doing music? Second grade was the first time I tried to make two words rhyme. So mm. uh, I don't remember what year second grade was, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but from then to now it was like, you know, I've been like just trying my hand at it. And like fifth grade, um, me and my homie, uh, my homie Keem, he had got a, uh, actually, no, that was a little later. I was fifth grade, I used to rap. I used to rap on my phone and I would send it to my computer and I would like put it on this uh, thing called Mixpad. I put it on Mixpad and I, I would line it up with the beat and shit. It sounded yeah. awful, but it was so bad. <laughs> but <laughs> shit sounded terrible. But I just lined it up on Mixpad and that was like my first little bit of, you know, my introduction to just like hearing my own music or whatever. Like nobody else was listening to this, obviously. Yeah. Um, but then uh, then later on down the line, I think like eighth grade was, uh, we got our first, you know, we got our first mic. My man Keem, he got a microphone. Yeah. And it was like the whole hood had a microphone. Yeah. So had, like everybody yeah. recording this shit. Uh, so then we, you know, that was the first time I heard 808s on my music because yeah. before I was recording on the phone, you couldn't get the bass and shit. So um, yeah, I just went through cycles and cycles of just like trying and trying and trying. Like we, I went through every hood studio yeah. b- before they were studios. Like we, we did the basement thing. Like mm-hmm. I did all that shit. You know, what I mean, back when studios only was like twenty five an hour. <laughs> Quickly it changes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hell yeah! You um, and you're from Philly. Yeah, yeah, I'm from West. Well, oh, West Philly. Mm-hmm. About where? Uh, Fifty Second Street. So my dad. Uh, my like Fifty Second or what? My dad was on uh, Catherine Street, and my aunt was on Addison. <laughs> <Street. laughs> you, you was on Catherine? No, I'm from Mansion. Oh, okay. But right, you know, yeah. I know that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, nah, yeah. My dad was on um, Catherine Street, and then my aunt was on Addison. So I was like right in between. Like if I wasn't in one house, I was at the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you right. Oh, I, okay, I know that area well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, you you. You from the you you from the hood? hood. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It ain't the hood no more. They done bought that shit out. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It, yes, it is. I mean, it's the people in there is still, you know, like, but uh, but but the like the bottom of um of uh Catherine, like yeah. closer towards um um because it was, it was on, it's like at the we's at the top of Fifty First Street, so that's why we we always just say Fifty Second. But um, the bottom of Fifty First Street. It's all, oh, yeah. it's nice ass cribs oh, yeah. and yeah, apartments and all it's that beautiful. shit. Like, yeah, this it's shit. like you move a couple blocks, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, my, well, my, like, my, just on the same street. Just my go brother, my brother lived on 47th, I think, 47th and Hazel. And I used to go over there, the shit was like a field trip because, like, it was like, wow. it, it, it was like college campus type shit yeah. all over there. Like, you know, we go outside, we could go hang out, niggas could go to the bar. It was a whole different no, type yeah, of energy, you know what I'm saying, from, from, from up the street. So yeah, nah, but I, I grew up around there and then um and then like throughout high school I just did a bunch of like jumping around. Like my mom had moved out the neighborhood, um and then I had moved to California at one point with my uncle. Uh like I just did a bunch you of You were like, like in high school? Wow. wow. Yeah. Um I just did a bunch of like just jumping around. Like I just uh uh I'm grateful for it because I never really got I never really got sucked into one place and mm-hmm. that like I just you know, I just always had the opportunity and the the you know, I always had the luxury to just explore, and yeah. just learn more, yeah. and to see more, and you know, probably shape your identity and exactly, and keep yeah. you from just only like just people being get a like in nigga. one group. <laughs> <laughs> no, just like they'd be like one group, and then it's like, no, nah, I'm just not just a Philly nigga. I'm just like I'm mansion, and this is my folks, yeah. and then they yeah, don't yeah. want me being with these other folks. So right. it's like uh-huh. collaboration probably comes a lot easier for you, like because mm-hmm. you're just used to dealing with new people. All the well, time. I just I had to I had to hone in on my identity, and I had to become mm-hmm. like. I had to become a Philly nigga when I wasn't in Philly, but I had to understand who I was when I was in Philly. You know what I'm saying? So like yeah. when I'm outside of Philly, I can be I can be whoever the fuck I am, but I gotta still I, I still feel like I got like the flag on my back, like I'm carrying it, like yeah. no, I'm, I'm here for West Philly. But when I'm in Philly, it's like, okay, how do you just not be a nigga with dickies and in, in, in a in a thermal on? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like like, yeah. like not not just a nigga some long johns. Like how do you actually? you know uh, uh uh translate that and be different and so i had to like just really 
you know, do a lot of self identification and like I, I just was always just like a nigga that wanted to like stand out. Like I was like, wasn't yeah. you know, I just wanted wanted to just I don't know. Like it was like a big ass crowd. I wanted to just be like, okay, I'm gonna just hang over here. <laughs> but I think that also gives you the strength to also like be alone and be and be confident in who you are. Because yeah. I'm very similar to you. Like I moved around a lot when I was a kid. Yeah. And like I can make friends with anybody, but also know like this is who I am and I'm not gonna be somebody else. You right. Know what I'm right. Yeah. Which yeah, gives sure. you your own lane to kind of ride in, which is really cool. See, the thing was, I everywhere I moved, I kept coming back to Philly. Like, mm. I kept coming back to Philly. And and the, the but the problem was like. I was on some little hood rat shit. It's like, you know what I mean? I was I was one of them niggas just outside. We like I was flash mobbing and all that mm. shit. Like I, yeah. I was I was one of them. We was in, in the party groups and South all that Street. shit. <laughs> yeah, I was on South <laughs> Street. Like I mean, like we uh, yeah, I was I was on that. So so um but what ended up happening was I started to get like what's the word? It's a phrase for it now. Survivor's guilt. Like Ooh. I started to oh, get survivor's like, remorse. Remorse. Or survivor's yeah. remorse. Yeah, 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 yeah. I started to get like survivor's remorse or like just this idea that like I almost felt like my Philly life was like a save game. Like it was like, mm. cause at the end of the That's day, unique way to I say could that. just turn this shit off. Like yeah. I can go, like, like my mom moved out of the hood completely. You know what I'm saying? So like, it was like, I would, I would just from like Thursday to Monday, I would just be in the hood and it was like, all right, I'm gonna go hang out my mom's house. Or like, I just go to California. All right, man, like, yeah, I'll just see y'all next summer. Like, or whatever it was, but mm. I just started, it started the, it just started eating at me. I was like, damn, like I can't hang out the same way. I can't mm. stand on the street with y'all no more. I can't like, just because, it wasn't that I felt any, like, you know, I felt like I was better than anybody, no shit like that. It was just, like, I understood. I was like, damn, I don't have to do this. Like, this isn't, and some of the niggas out there, they didn't have to do it either. But, like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They mom was in the crib and shit. They was high, and like, you know, yeah. but whatever. But, like, but it just started to feel like, oh, shit, like, this doesn't have to be. Like, you know, I once you once you realize that you have, like, other options, and that's, that's the thing with a lot of people. It's just, like, people just don't realize that there's other avenues we can take so yeah. once you realize you got other options you got other ways you can go with it you're like well yeah i don't gotta do that shit no more yeah. you know what i mean and it doesn't do anybody any favor sometimes because nah. it's like those numbers the more that people start shutting off then people be like damn i gotta get serious what, yeah. I'm, what I'm doing yeah, yeah and then they mm -hmm. might see you and be like dang he's serious when when did you like really become serious about music and then you started introducing yourself when people say like oh who are you and you're like i'm a rapper or i do music or you know what i mean um, there was, it's funny what you just said, like, like, when you talking about, um, when you talking about, like, like, you was always this person, the same, the same exact type way that I was, like, I've never been, like, I meet a lot of introverts now, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, <laughs> like, y'all don't like talking to people? Like, yeah. just because I've always been that type of person, so, like, if somebody ever met me as Armani, since I was a kid, like, when I wasn't Armani, when I was just Mani, like, you know what I mean, as my mom mm -hmm. called me and shit, but, like, when I was just Mani, I was always like, I'm a rapper. I'm like third grade. I'm a rapper. Fifth grade. I'm a rapper. No, I'm gonna be a rapper. I'm a, like, but it wasn't cool to say you was a rapper. Yeah. Like when you had to kind of hide that shit. Like you know what yeah. I mean. And then when I grew up, it became a connotation because everybody started rapping when SoundCloud was big. You had yeah. to you had to kind of be secretive about it. Then like, <laughs> yeah, I be you know like sometimes I make a little music. Like hey, yeah. you know what I mean. I didn't want to tell too much. But um uh yeah, I just I kind of always just was you know just leaning into it and um um eventually it just becomes a little bit easier the more accolades you get mm -hmm. like my oh, mom yeah. my mom didn't you know it was kind of like <laughs> okay yeah you want to do this rap thing whatever like go to yeah. school nigga. Like, you know what i'm saying you and didn't it was, go to college uh, i went to i went to two colleges actually yeah i went to i dropped out of both but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, um I, I went to like when i when i was talking about you know just like i want to i want to take off for school and just be a rapper with you it didn't seem real to her until um she had to see something tangible, something mm -hmm. that she understood, mm -hmm. yeah. which was uh, MTV had posted me, and it was like oh, wow. the artist to watch for next year or whatever yeah. it was. Like it was years ago, and she seen that, and she said, "Oh, you see, <laughs> you're, you're a rapper. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you yeah. say that?" Like, <laughs> then shit changed, but you know, so you got it. You like, yeah. But I've I've always been like on some. Yeah, I rap. Like, it, maybe if it was a girl or something like that, I wouldn't just, like, openly tell them that just because, you know, they start looking at me a little different. But yeah. um, I always, you know, if you ask me, I never had a job. I never had, like, a, uh, like I worked at Chipotle for 30 minutes. That was the only job I've ever wow, had. Wow, your whole minutes. life. My entire life. So you've been getting money through rap this whole time? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> 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 but <laughs> I never had, like, I I didn't I didn't make a check in music, I want to say, until, like, 20. 
18. Okay. Oh, wow. You know okay. what I mean? But like the you know, it's just like he's passionate about it, it's something you love mm-hmm. doing. Mm-hmm. Uh and I didn't I didn't understand how to make money in it either. Like I like like there wasn't like shows didn't really pay mm-hmm. back then. You had to do a lot of free shows and shit like that. So um and then streaming wasn't really a thing. It was still yeah. it was still SoundCloud. So I didn't understand like where do people get money from <laughs> in music. Uh but yeah, twenty eighteen was like the first time I ever got a check on some music wow. shit. So your mom was supporting you. Nah. I was say, that's why she was shaky. <laughs> she probably was like, bruh, when you make some money. My, no, my mom, my mom's, my mom definitely, I'm not even going to slay her. My mom definitely supported My mom that's bought lovely. me, um, yeah. she bought me, uh, uh, she bought me my first mic, but I think it was like, it felt kind of reluctant. It felt like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah. want you to do this shit, but like, I'm, here, man, like, just leave me the fuck alone. Like, she was like, you know what I mean? She yeah. bought me my first mic and I figured it out with that first mic, but, um, but, on top of that, outside of that, like my mom, she had, she also, um, when my dad died, she bought me, a, her and my uncle bought me a, um, a ticket to LA. Wow, they bought yeah. me a ticket to LA. They was like, yo, because I was, I was just stuck in the city and I was losing my fucking mind. Like I can't, even like uh, 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 back on 52nd, like it's, I can't go, like I, you know, I talk to the homies all the time yeah. and shit, but I just don't go around there because of personal things. It's like, yeah. mm-hmm. this shit just, it, 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 get, it get in my head sometimes yeah. when I go around there. So, I had to leave the city, and she bought me that plane ticket. And was like, yo, you know, just go out there, go find yourself or whatever. Your dad so. was like, you and your dad were close. Um, we were like, the you know, the, the problem was, we was close when I was a kid, mm-hmm. was really close when I was a kid. And I just let like I let some personal things that didn't necessarily pertain to me affect our relationship. So mm-hmm. like his relationship with my mother, I let that affect our relationship a lot. Yeah. And um, and we were still like, we were still, you know, obviously uh uh um to some degree speaking we go yeah. to events like you know we hang out and shit like that I go over there but i just i let that shit get so in the middle of it that yeah. once um you know in my head i just had this whole thing i'm like you know it's cool because i'm gonna just be a rapper and i'm gonna show him and then yeah. and like it, you know you just got this idea like i'm gonna be better than you and i'm yeah. gonna be a better version of you and, woo, woo. Mm-hmm. and when he had passed it just or like when he first got sick it just was fucking me up because i was like Damn, I like you know what I mean. Like you, yeah. you I, I'm battling with this idea of like mortality and like yeah. how real time is. I'm like, oh shit, all that shit that I was over there bitching about, none of this really matters. Like yeah. it's not what none of this was that important. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So um, um, we was really close when he passed, but um, yeah, I just I I, I uh I like yeah, <laughs> it's just like you know what I mean. Like I battle with that a lot when nah, I go I over mean, there. But you know. I got I, 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 opinions about that because I still always come back to you were the child in the situation. Right, right, you, right. It's, it's not your responsibility to repair your relationship with your parent. It's your parents. But you don't understand Because, no, I have a 22-year-old. Nah. I don't care what he do. You can't mm-hmm. you can't shun me. I will be outside your door. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, mm-hmm. Like, I had situations where they came and I was at the family member's house like, <laughs> e, get here, Nick, come on, you're going with me. And <laughs> right, they're like, right, right. but, and I'm like, this, come here, you know? Yeah. So it's like... It, Nah, it's different parents gotta just step up there's no excuses in this game it's no excuses no, I, I, I understand I, I think but for me it was just like my mom my mom urged me to like yo go be with your dad like yeah. don't like she never was she never was the person that was like like you know trying to yeah but you like, know but, but it, was, it just was it was so much conflict you know what I'm saying yeah. like so much conflict and I was with my mom that I like, like uh, you know, you, you kind of you well, start being maybe not a little boy but right but you just you start know. being defensive towards yeah, like you're like man nah Fuck him, <laughs> and like, and I didn't really even understand it. Like, you, you watch, I watch, uh, uh, uh I watched Power, yeah. And like, mm-hmm. when everybody like, man, nut ass Tariq or some bullshit, like, I start looking at, him, I'm like, damn, I was nut ass Tariq, bro. <laughs> I was nut ass Tariq. Where you like, you know, you can't yeah. really understand what's going on between your parents, but you feel like you need you the man and all, yeah. you need to step up and whoopie whoop, and it's like. You know, like I wish. It, it, sometimes I go back. I'm like, man, I wish I would have just been a child. Like I wish I would have, you know, like kind of just removed myself from certain situations and just. Dad, dads you better know. know though. Like, you can't you can't fuck with the person that your kid loves the most and think it's just gonna be smooth. Right. Like right, right. you can't you can't. That's the mothership. You, you know, came from her. That's how you came on the planet. Something period. my something my dad told me though. Um, he told me to never be a um, a person with good intentions and mm. bad execution yeah. and and if you know anybody that knew my dad they would say that's that nigga to a t <laughs> yeah. like he always had good intentions but the way he went about certain shit like one of the things that drove a real wedge in between us that actually did something to pertain to us was my i wanted to move to la or to california i was yeah. like in my head i was like i'm gonna get a better life it's gonna help me be a rapper yeah um and so 
my mom was like, okay, cool. She bought me. That's when I moved out there when I was in um, high school. My dad didn't like the idea of me living in California because mm-hmm. I was far away from him. Like yeah. any other time, it's like, oh, I can just drive up and see you. Even if we don't see each other all the time, I know I just the comfortability of knowing that you're close to me, it, it makes me feel better. You going across the country, I ain't with it. Mm-hmm. But he didn't know how to say that, and he didn't know how to articulate that in a way to where as though it would – you know, actually, it would actually work out in his favor. So we took my mom to court for child support <laughs> because he knew that the court would have, you know, uh, 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 summoned me there. I would have had to be there, too, to make yeah. the decision of, like, whatever, whatever. And he was like, okay, I know if you come all the way back here for court, you ain't in California no more, you know, like, mm, then you'd yeah. be back on this side. But that was, you know what I mean? It, yeah. and that's, a, that's just an example of, like, his heart was in the right place. He really was just like, I don't want to lose my son. Yeah. yeah. And I understand it now that I'm older. But at the time, I'm like, man, you just took California away from me. What the yeah. fuck? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So you probably wasn't a um, kid. You weren't a little kid. So. No, nah, I wasn't a little. I was, yeah. I, was, I was maybe like 15 or 16 at the time. It's but, like um, one of those things where you, it's, it's, and I'm, I'm going through it now too, which is crazy that like your, your, your parents can only articulate what they know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They get yeah. all these feelings, they get all these emotions. And now they're trying to communicate that. They're trying to say what they love the most. But, you know, they don't got the tools to necessarily do that all the time. Well, that's the, that's the thing. Like, bro, now, now that we adults, yeah. I get to realize, like, oh, shit, y'all don't got it figured out. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the best part about it. Because when you a kid, you like, oh, nah, nigga, you, you an adult. Like, yeah. you, you know, you're not one of us. You you know how to do shit. Yeah. Nigga, you done been around this world a couple times. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't understand it. Again, I wish I would have just understood it as a kid and just been a fucking... Kid, I mean, you know, it is what it is, but like, um, yeah, sometimes as, as kids, we just think that adults got all that shit figured out. Yeah. So when they do some like faulty human shit that humans just do, we take it hard. Mm-hmm. We don't be like, we don't be like, oh, like, I understand you a human. We like, nah, nigga, you a fucking parent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you I a mean, superhero. You kids, a, exactly. I was just about to say that, yeah. Yeah, but kids don't got agency over their own life. So right, right, if right. you control my movement, yeah, I'm going to take it away. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You're like, why you blocking me? Yeah. So <laughs> who, who, do you, who do you think, like, was that a family thing? Like, music, loving it, inspiration. Yeah. Like, what was your biggest inspiration that, like, I guess musically, who's your biggest inspiration? Um, and then like as far as an artist you know what i mean yeah so so my mom she played a lot of uh she played a lot of james brown kirk franklin mm. when i was growing up kirk, Frank- kirk franklin was her shit <laughs> Stomp. <laughs> um and just wdas obviously like i had to mm-hmm. listen to that shit every day going to school but uh uh and then my dad um my dad was very like on the hip hop side. I was he, like he bought me my first Fifty Cent album, or he bought wow, it, but yeah. I took it from him. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, 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 uh, and like I took, I remember I took a uh, late registration. He had a he had a burnt version of it. Yeah, and, uh, I took late registration from him. Um, but like you know, like and then there was a lot of Ludacris. Uh, Eminem was really kind of what what tipped the scale for me and said, let me try this out because everything else before that it was like. Just rapping about clubs, rapping about women, yeah. shit that I obviously didn't relate to because I was like fucking nine or whatever. Yeah. But like Eminem, Eminem, when he rapped, I didn't relate to none of that shit he was saying. He was talking about killing his mom, but <laughs> <laughs> but it showed me that you can be an anomaly in this yeah. world. Like I was like, oh shit, you don't have to follow the mold. Like I was like, oh, I can start rapping. When I was a kid, I thought I can start rapping when I'm an adult because. I experienced these things now. Nah, you ain't got to start rapping. Then you could rap about whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? Relates to your life. And so that was kind of what opened the door to say, just try this out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, but uh, uh, yeah, and like, uh, but Kanye West was obviously a really big influence. And I think just listening to Kanye, especially like an 808s drop, it just helped mm-hmm. me understand how to write music. It helped mm-hmm. me understand how to just like put it. Because when we grew up, um, just like Philly, you know, centralized to Philly. We, I grew up. I was Reed Dollars, Joey Jad, and me, yeah. and all. I'm like, you know, I was, I was on that type time. Like, I was just listening to that. The DVDs, I was playing every one of them. Head shots back to back, like you know, t- top class back to back. Um, but when it came to making songs, I didn't get it. Mm. I didn't, you know. And I, I think a lot of Philly rappers, even to this day, still yeah, don't fully good. understand it. But yeah. like, you know, just like the articulation of building a song and structuring a song like a song. Um, I listened to a lot of Kanye West to help me kind of, you know, really like masterclass that. Okay. You know what I mean? Absolutely, he's he's one of the best examples of yeah because he like you know you got the Stevie Wonders who that's <laughs> the, the, that's like God level mm-hmm. song right like making yeah, right yeah, you yeah. know what I mean structure and everything 
But once Kanye started doing stuff for stadiums and like, let me give them a mantra, right? You mm. know what I mean? Like, cause so many rappers, they just be rapping their ass off. And I'd be like, where's the <laughs> hook? Where, <laughs> Where's the part that the crowd can sing along right, with? Right, right. You know I'm, what I mean? I, I was smiling because we, we've been having this like, this dumbass debate and it doesn't make any sense, but we've been debating on who's better, uh, James Brown or Stevie Wonder. And <laughs> it like like it's just completely different types of music, music but, yeah. <laughs> but it's just fun to fucking argue about the shit. But but yeah, but no, yeah, I, I, I yeah. agree with you though. Cause, Cause but Stevie had a funk era, and then he had other eras. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and James he, he was funk. funk. Yeah, you know what I mean, right, right. So. Yeah, nah, <laughs> I'm like, let's not even get in that. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say we can do day. it, but I, yeah, no, 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 stay the course, stay the course. Um, but so, <laughs> so what I think is really cool though, we talked about a few things like your maturity that you have, you know, learning the process yourself. Like, do you have a certain approach that you take to making music? Like, do you does the, do the words come to you first? Does the sound come to you first? Does the whole track come all at once? Like, what what um, kind of pushes you that creation? Sound comes to me a lot of times first, like, uh, or, or there's like. Like I definitely write little like little bars that I thought was fly. I'm like, oh yeah. shit, that like you know what I mean, or some 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 current event happens, and I'm like, damn, that's a metaphor. But yeah. like, yeah. uh, for the most part, if somebody sends a beat, I just like mumble a bunch of shit into my phone, uh, and I'm like, melody, yeah, first. Yeah, 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 and I come up with some sort of melody. Like that's how I did Billie Eilish. That's how I do like that's how I do a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? But like, or actually, Billie Eilish, I wrote a lot of that. But, um, but yeah, a, a lot of times it's just like I come up with some sort of a melody, some sort of style, and then I just kind of run with that cadence and that rhythm until the mumbles turn into words <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean but i but i work um i work alone for the most part like you know how niggas be throwing the studio sessions like yeah. 30 niggas in there like yeah. this boy don't do shit that boy don't do shit like that this nigga bought the bought the lean he just spilled a sprite <laughs> all over this so like come on bro i, I mean I, I i work for the most part just be me engineer like one of the homies yeah. one of the like you know or or like uh uh my man christian he sings he'll come in and like you know what i'm saying we just kind of bounce off of each other's energy but like yeah and i can't i can't record with sneakers on bro i gotta either do socks really? or i got these little just these little chin clates <laughs> like these little these little slides and shit. <laughs> but uh, other than that i cannot record with shoes is on. that like a like a grounded thing you feel like you have to be close to the ground or like uh, if you want to get spiritual bro, I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I just i just feel comfortable when i'm like i like i gotta yeah. feel comfortable when i'm sense. recording so i can like really get into yeah. you know get into me and i can't you know i got these shoe cages on yeah. like I, I got these these foot cages <laughs> i can't be Wearing no foot cages, but I'm trying yeah, to do myself. Everybody got their something. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, I know, like, what you said about, I know Missy Elliott records alone. Yeah. She's, like, in the booth by herself. Mm-hmm. She, like, don't look at me. Yeah. Like, because I'm making weird noises. Don't. Let's let me do my thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, that, like, because I don't, like, I commend them. Niggas that be like, yo, bring the bitches through the studio. Yeah. Or the 30,000 wings and, like, you know what I mean? All that shit. Like, I commend you because I can't do it. Nigga. Like, <laughs> I'm not the dude that's like, yo, bring everybody through the studio. It's a party and I'm being in the booth recording. Like, yeah. that shit weird to me, bro. Like, I, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a little different. So, it, it's jumping back into the music real quick because we, we have a few different projects. You got, I, I did a little research. Okay. So, I want to see if we can talk a little bit about them. Okay. Keep in touch in 2019. Yes, sir. Things We Lost in the Fire, the EP 2021. Yes, sir. Um, some notable tracks that I got off of there that I enjoyed myself. Okay. Watch yeah. Yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. That was fire. Uh, yeah. Danny <laughs> Mac. Danny Mac is Danny Mac shit. was, Danny was Mac bars. Is I need to make another Danny Mac low key. That was, that was fire. And I think it is, I think knowing you now t- chopping up a little bit before like yeah. it showed you you know what i'm saying like you, you your neighborhood kind of like the skills that you possess yeah what yeah, she yeah. was trying to do which i thought mm-hmm. was really cool um obviously billy eilish billy going eilish, crazy yeah. <laughs> and then uh, uh, one that stood uh stood out for me was wonderful wonderful yes and uh yeah. it was more of the it's one of my favorites it's beautiful man yeah. like honestly like i think what stood out to me and what on that one was just like human humanity you know what i'm saying like being able to to kind of like understand one who you are and then mm-hmm. enjoying the things around you yeah so um going through that like do you feel like you grew through each project or do you feel like like what do you think separates each one i i definitely minimalized through each project but mm-hmm. i understood more mm-hmm. um so like at first it was this this concept of like i wanted to make the perfect song yeah like i wanted to make the perfect um you know, like, 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 in my head, I was like, I fucking fuse everything that ever inspired me. Yeah. Then it would be the perfect song. It would be like yeah. gospel. It would be rap. It'd be trap. It'd be, you know, uh, 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 soul, whatever. Like, <clears throat> let me just, you know, and uh, 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 
I felt like on a record like Wonderful, I did it. I had the, I had the mm-hmm. choir, I had the organs, yeah. I had the trumpets, I had like I had everything that that inspired me into one record. Um, and I didn't want to do it no more. <laughs> like I, okay. I, I, I felt like I accomplished this. I was like, why well, keep accomplishing the same fucking thing over and over again? So like, yeah. um, what I learned through making Wonderful was I was like, Wonderful was such a big record, and like my niece helped me write it. It was yeah. just like you know, it felt so raw, so yeah. real. Um, but I wasn't at stadium level, mm-hmm. and that was it. Felt like a stadium song. I was uh, I was getting bought out to these shows to play this song for like stadium. But when it came time for me to perform my own shows, mm-hmm. I was doing like bars and like these small venues, like these two hundred cap venues. And I'm like, I can't play a bunch of wonderful songs at mm-hmm. two hundred cap venues. Like I gotta make music that I can't. You know, I just felt like I was skipping steps. I said I have to make yeah. music that people at you know almost at the ground level just kind of understand and and i have to build myself from the ground level up so when we started having conversations just about rap music about how rap music consumed about what rap music sound like um one of my friends me and we having a conversation he says he said rap like real rap or good rap he said good rap is like fine china he said um you know people like it they look at it they admire it they say damn that's a nice ass plate like or whatever uh, but mm-hmm. They put it up in yeah. a china cabinet. They put it in. It's a centerpiece at the table. They never eat off of it. They yeah. never actually utilize it. When it's time to utilize and it's time to eat, niggas pull out styrofoam. Niggas pull out porcelain. Niggas yeah. pull out anything other than the <laughs> fine china. <laughs> yeah. And that was a good metaphor for me to just understand how to make music. It was like, mm-hmm. okay, let me let me not try and make an art piece every time I walk in. Let me just make something palatable that we enjoy. You know what yeah. I mean? And that can be the art right there. But if I'm trying to make this shit, if I'm trying to Mona Lisa every fucking time, it's like, yeah, you might get a Mona Lisa, but like, we don't want to see Mona Lisa. Like, <laughs> I Mona Lisa kind of yeah. ugly, little kid, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the ugliest arts I've ever seen. No, I'm playing, but like, but you know, so um, yeah, that 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 I think I grew by just understanding a little bit more like minimalization. Yeah. Um, I, I like and and. The things we lost in the fire. That was the first time I ever like spoke about some of those type of um, those events, and uh, especially like in a way that was a little more darker. Like I said, because I try to do the happy hood music thing, but that was the first time I ever like brought up, especially like the house fire I had as a kid. Um, I just was always scared to talk about it. I just felt like I wouldn't have done it justice. And like when we started writing that record, um, things we lost in the fire. It was like it was like another like five ten songs <laughs> that we started yeah. making. And I was like, bro, let's just put this out. Like, let's yeah. just put this out how it is, and let's just like capture this moment. Um, and like, it was right around the time like that whole arson shit that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I had just got like clear for all of that. They just dropped all the charges. So I was like, let's just get this shit out the door, um, because all the other records where that shit would have, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it would have yeah. became way bigger, well, much longer, extended, like drawn out project than it needed to be. Like, I felt like it just really got to the point and did what it had to do. Um, and a record like Watch Yourself, I was like, I did that shit when I had COVID. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was like the first strand of COVID. It was the yeah. first colorway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. the cool know, COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dang. Okay. So I, then the Titan, Billie, Billie Eilish. What was the inspiration? And why, why'd you name it that? Because, like, I mean, the, the song says Billie Eilish. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, it's one thing to have her in the song, but you title it. You know what I mean? Like, the title. Because you know that mean? was the first, like, when it dropped and it came in, like, you just... Billy Eilish, like you just, yeah. I mean, you felt it. It, it, it. You know, that was the first like really significant moment of the song. Um, but like when I when I was writing it, like bro, I had seen this tweet that was like, man, I, uh, somebody some tweet that was like, I fuck with Billy Eilish not because of her music, but because she dressed like them franchise boys. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, that's fucking funny because you wear them big ass t-shirts. Yeah. So after that, I was like, damn, like you know, that's when the metaphor kind of popped in my yeah. head. I wrote it down. And uh, we we just we was thinking about different beats we wanted to sample. Me and my guy July, I was sending him a bunch of links back and forth. And then yeah. one of the ones I sent him was uh, it's nothing by Noriega. I was like, bro, yeah. I love this song. Like that was one of my favorite songs growing up. Um, and so he sent me that beat back. I said, nigga, what? <laughs> it's easy, you know what I'm saying? And so uh, and then I just put that idea over that and yeah. just kept it going. So I got I got a question because I'm we are we are big Pharrell fans, Netflix yeah. fans, yeah, yeah. and I was just like. I heard Billie Eilish. Obviously, I was like, Neptune's beat. Yeah, yeah clips, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. easy. So my thought process went to: 
how did how did, did you have you met them yet? Like, have there been conversation? Did you, I met I met Nori. Nori did was you? there. Nori like did he give you the blessing? He was like, here you go. Like, yeah, absolutely. I love it. Well, well, no, he gave it to me after it came oh. out. <laughs> he gave me a thank you for blowing up my publishing. Like, yeah, <laughs> he gave me one of them, but uh, uh but no, I met Nori. Nori, that's, that's my dog. Now he's like you know like cool uncle now. Yeah. Time. But um, Pharrell, I had we like we was in the same you know what I mean yeah. like uh, at the something in the water drink, but uh, uh, we didn't speak about it. Like we ain't, you know we ain't um we didn't have any. Did you say hello? I tried to. It was it was busy. Like I got there yeah. on like the second day, like the night of the yeah. second day, yeah. and so it was like a bunch of moving around already. I think he was about to go on stage and gotcha. shit like that. So yeah. it was like, you know, it was it was one of them. But uh, but I met Justin Timberlake that night. Hey. I, like that's random. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, nah, I haven't met Pharrell yet. I haven't like gotten to say thank you to Pharrell like to his face. But I got to say thank you to Nori. Like you know, what I mean, yeah. Nori was fucking with the record for sure. That's beautiful. I mean, anytime like you do something to inspiration or like or have the passion and you get the OGs to like yeah. give you that blessing, man, mm-hmm. that's that's a great feeling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a great feeling. We, had to, we just had to give him proof of concept. We was like, look, it's making money. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all like it, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, but nah, nah, nah. Like, so um, earlier in, you said as a visual, you know, as a visual creator. Um, mm-hmm. Like we're film people, me and Josh. Okay, yeah. So the videos are beautiful. Thank you. So yes. what would you like? A lot of artists. That's sometimes the the companion piece that they miss out is that mm-hmm. the visuals. Because like right now, look, visual medium is it? It's like like we we could be a. I don't know what we could if we could be an audio pod. Like you know what yeah, I mean? Nah. It seems like audio pods are almost not dying off, but everybody's incorporating video. Yeah. Everybody's Instagram, whether you like it or not, like. I saw my um one of my homies who was like a big marketer. He was like everybody if you have an Instagram, it's a your media mm-hmm. company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, what advice would you give to other musicians and artists about approaching visuals w- for projects? Um, yeah, I low key want to say like make three videos, three, mm-hmm. make three music videos of, of whatever song it is that you're making, and that's like the three is like one is the actual video, um. Two is a social cut, which I mean, like you can make that in the same video. Like if you find like one one thing that you really like, for me, it's one takes. Like one takes always work really well on social media when you just kind of like run straight through. But the music video, because you can't really push a music video on social media without it feeling like you selling something to somebody. Mm. Um, the the one take, and then the third thing is like the lyric video. You know, sure. what I mean, just the, yeah. just the follow up, um, the follow up content. But outside of those three things make like 30 fucking pieces of content. Like just, you know, mm-hmm. just keep like people, you know, people are looking at me and learning a lot from this Billie Eilish campaign and rollout because I'm like, bro, I'm still promoting. Mm-hmm. You understand? Like it's in the song, the song dropped in May, but I'm yeah. still promoting because it's only been a month. We got 30 million streams. I want, I want 300 million. I want another Hell zero yeah. on that. I mm-hmm. want, you know what I'm saying? I want a gold record. I want a platinum record. So I'm not going to just, I think a lot of artists, have this concept in their head where they're like, yo, I'm going to tell y'all that it's about to drop and I'm going to drop it. And everybody supposed to know. Nah, nigga. Yeah. Like, whatever thing, anything I'm going to announce, I'm going to tell you at least three different times. Mm. Three three different creative ways I'm going to find a way to tell you whatever it is I'm trying to tell you. If it's like, yo, I got a new song coming. If it's, yo, the video is about to drop. If it's, I don't know, yo, like I spilled mustard on my t-shirt. Like, I'm going to find a creative way to tell you niggas this shit. Yeah. Three di- at least three different times. And, you know, so I just think that People need to just, uh, you know, people need to just shoot as many times as they possibly can. I think about think about it like, uh, you know, around the world, like where they got the the, the mm-hmm. fucking basketball rack set up. You mm-hmm. just take jump shot, take jump shot, and then yeah. when once you take all them jump shots, go in a different area and take more jump shots, take more jump mm-hmm. shots, then go in a different area, just go all around the court because, yeah, bro, like like one angle might not work, and then another one do, and yeah. then that one might not work on like there's this shit that I did on so on on Twitter. That worked really well, but didn't work on Instagram. The shit that I, it's a bunch of shit I did on TikTok. They got millions of views, but just got like a thousand likes on Instagram. Now mm-hmm. there's videos I got on Instagram that got like a million views, but they got like forty thousand on TikTok. It's really? Like, like you just have to shoot, yeah. shoot, yeah. shoot, shoot, and then keep shooting, bro. Like that's you know that's the only real piece of advice that makes sense. Is just like because yeah, I think people just try people just do the bare minimum. Mm. Bare minimum ain't the bare minimum no more. <laughs> yeah. Bare yeah. minimum is not the bare minimum. Anymore. Attention is expensive. Exactly. People don't have a whole lot of it. For mm-hmm. real, for real. Exactly. Wow. Um. Now, it, and it's funny because I know there's probably going to be people who they may actually know you from a lot of your social stuff. 
yeah. but more of the comedy stuff, yeah, then yeah. they may know you for music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what? What? How did that come about? The um, we say Philly Bull Diary. Yeah, it, it's this quote. I've been trying to get it right all week. Um, it's, do you know it's like it's like a a rising tide lifts all ships. I think it. That sounds like it would be a quote. Cool okay, okay. No, it okay. is. Cool. It is. Yeah, right. you, you that, right. Did I get it right? Okay, yep, cool. I, right. said it, I said it earlier this week, and it was awful. Like, I <laughs> fucked that up all the way, bro. It was bad. It was bad. Um, But I uh, I always kind of was like, I don't want to be this. You know, like, everybody had this anomaly. or Not anomaly. Everybody had this, like, idea in their head. Like, I don't want to be the YouTube rapper or the Instagram mm-hmm. rapper or the da-da-da-da rapper. And people didn't want to be this person known for their personality, but then tried to rap. And... Mm-hmm. I understood that and I felt that way for a while, but then I said, well, like, what if you just don't become either? <laughs> like, what if you, you so fucked up about this side that you yeah. don't even end up getting this side? And yeah, so yeah. Um, I started to just think, I was like, yo, if I plant seeds everywhere, a rising tide was it lifts all ships, lifts eh? all ships yeah. <laughs> a rising tide lifts all ships. I was like, if I plant seeds every single place, I started to think about, like, you know, you take a Cardi B, he's one of the yeah. biggest rappers in the, in the, in the game right now, yeah. and her for the first couple of times I seen that she was yelling on Instagram. Like yeah. and her teeth wouldn't then look as good. Like I mean, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like we remember that. We, yeah. we and we yeah. remember when she got the teeth. She yeah. got a bag and fixed her teeth. Like yeah. we remember yeah. all of these moments. And I'm like, yo, if we can journal what we're doing in a creative way, because people just kept coming or people who was around me would be with me and be like, Yo, you have a pers- a personality that like people don't have. You have mm-hmm. the type of, you know, you have the type of energy that, like when people come in the room with you, they wanna be, you know what I'm saying? Like you light the room up. So you have to show that as much as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. a lot of times I was like, nah, man, take this rap song. Yeah, right. I'm like, fuck personality, nigga, <laughs> bars. <laughs> but, yeah. but it, you know, after a while, it's like, you understand, we we are rappers, so to speak, but when the camera shut off, when the, when the mic turn off, the mic yeah. not hot, like, I'm a human. I eat cereal. I eat fuck. You know what I'm saying? I watch cartoons. Nigga, I sleep. Like I, yeah. it, like I do everything that humans do. I shower sometimes. Not playing, but like, <laughs> I, I, like, like I do everything that humans do. I'm a fucking human being. So I started to just like lean more towards the I'm a human who raps rather than I'm a rapper who does mm-hmm. human shit. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? So um, so uh, I'm giving you a long winded answer. I apologize, but I had a uh uh this this episode of the Boondocks that I always liked um the, the Dear Santa one where he was, <laughs> Dear where Riley, Santa <laughs> yeah when Riley was talking to Santa he was like you a bitch ass nigga <laughs> I, I was like yo if I remade these and just like told stories this would be fucking hilarious and I always would say it and it, yeah. and um it took like all of everything that I went through with uh things we lost in the fire to just be like yeah. you know what no stone no stone unturned you know yeah. like and, and I would watch like even Wallow like I had a conversation with Wallow like boy it was just like no stone unturned like do everything that you said you're gonna do don't waste time thinking about it mm-hmm. don't keep saying you're gonna do it don't like no stone unturned just do all that shit yeah. and I did it I did them journals I didn't even realize how big them shits was yeah. like mm-hmm. because I was you know I was in it was quarantine I was in my yeah. crib doing shits I went out to like when the, when the world finally opened up I went out to one event and everybody's, yo, though, them journals, bro, them shits is funny as shit, bro. Like, you, da 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 And so that's what I'm like, nigga, hey, you, you seeing them shits? Like, hey, like, you know what I mean? And be, just because I guess I was comparing it to other people's numbers, they get millions and millions. I was getting like some thousands, 100,000 or whatever. I'm like, oh, it ain't really going up, but 100,000 is 100,000. If, yeah. if 100,000 yeah. people fucked with it, you know what I'm saying? So um, it just kept on becoming like, it's like, all right, well, fuck it, let's just do it consistently now. Let's just yeah. keep going with it. Let's just keep coming up with funny ass ideas. And then eventually it just became like, Less about let's just find a funny story to tell, but it's like let's spread the narrative of what's going on in my actual life. Now it now it kind of runs as a through line. Now yeah. I'm not just I'm not just telling funny stories. I'm like, yo, and this is what's going on in Billie Eilish. This mm-hmm. is what's going on with me. This is what's like this is where I'm at. This is the transitional moment. This is yeah. the, you know what I'm saying? Like whatever it is. So um it just yeah, it just it just became a, a fun thing to do. But it's like it's also people don't even realize it's just it's documentation. It's journaling. You know yeah. what I mean? It, it, it says journal, but it's like it's really I'm I'm journaling. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm I'm I'm. You're gonna remember this moment, and then you're gonna remember this moment. You're gonna talk about it in a fun, creative way, and be like, "Yo, he says funny shit." But you also digested the story of yep. what's going on in my actual life right now. So yeah. I don't know. It's just 
find, find a way to be creative. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. And, and engage it with your audience, you know, exactly, like it's yeah. on social because that's what they want. They want to be engaged. Like you said, it's always when you release your content about the music, it's always like you're selling, you're selling. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I will listen to your rap. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like I will. But what else? And then you giving yeah. up something mm-hmm. else to like mm-hmm. and fun and relatable. Right. Because sure it's, like, it's, like, it's like I had to think I was like, you know, there people don't care about the fact that you do something like just simple as that. Yeah. People yeah. don't care that you do something. You got a podcast. OK, cool. Like, yeah. Happy for you. They, that's, that's, that's where it stops. Yeah. At. I'm happy yeah, for, for real. You. And if either I was going if I was going to listen to it, I'd be listening to it by now. Yeah. If oh you rap, happy for you. If I was going to listen to it, I'd be listening to it by now. So it's like. What's the thing that you can do that's going to make people share it? Mm. Yes. Not share it because they support you. Not share it because they fuck with you and want other people to fuck with you. What's the thing that somebody's just going to blindly share? And what's the thing that people are just going to come back to your page mm-hmm. for? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to be a rap. I yeah. tell you right now. It ain't going to be because I spit some hot shit on some, some video or something like that. That ain't. Like, yeah. It's cool, but it's not content that carries over. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's if you fuck with me, you'll fuck with this. But you're not going to share this. You're just going to drop some fire emojis and you're going to go on about your day. You yeah, might not even sure. watch the whole thing. You know what I'm for saying? Sure. So now it's like, okay, what's the thing that that, that people enjoy sharing? Is mm-hmm. it, whether it be comedy, yep. it, sometimes it's news, sometimes it's, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes it's like fucking information about the climate change. I don't know. It's but like because it's relatable. And yeah. they could be like, yo, weren't we just talking about this? Yeah, or exactly, is this exactly, exactly what we go through? That's and so, 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 so I had to think about that. And I was like, you know, like here's these ideas I have that people, you know, like these are the things that I that I think about that I know people would share or I think people would share. And yeah. then all you need is that proof of concept of people actually sharing it. And you say, well, fuck it, it yeah. works. <laughs> I was going to say, too, I, it's funny that you said that, too, because, like, um, the reason I, it, it's clicking to me now that we're having this conversation. Yeah. I had actually known about you originally through these videos because you had the head wrap on. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So during oh, COVID, yeah, oh, Josh and his head rag. During COVID, you was you was head rag boy. Do rags got a hole in it, and I was uh, like, this ain't gonna work. This yeah. ain't this ain't gonna work. So I was like, let me go on Amazon, just figure something out. So I uh, bought a head wrap, right? Uh-huh. I was like, oh, I'm gonna tie it like an auntie called it. This is what yeah, it is. Yeah. So I had that on for like <laughs> most of COVID and after COVID, and it was yeah. like, look, he's wearing one too. I was like, oh, he wear this is kind of yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what I'm talking about. That's the energy I need. Uh-huh. Now, I thought you've been doing that. Josh goes nah, to school just, with an auntie scarf on. I yeah, nah, I was, like, I was, I was my, I used to, I used to put on all my stories. I was Auntie Blanco. That was my shit. See, because I, I, I would tie it. I make this big ass rose in the front. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm an artist with this fucking. Yeah, like, see, yeah. So you got to better not be. Yeah, I be sitting down. Really trying to put it together and shit. See, like, yeah. see, look, I was the only one, and it, yeah. it came from somewhere. So, Auntie Blanco, listen, man, no, no. <laughs> changing the world, <laughs> one head rep at a time. Absolutely. So, no, um, no. like representing Philadelphia. So, I'm sure mm. when you do shows every, every elsewhere, like you, you are kind of like you're you're culturally important Philly out there. So, what is that? How does that feel, and what does that mean to be like a voice of Philly? Yo, it's, it's different. I'll tell you what. Um, this is the first year that I had to go to um, events and be like the person at mm. the event, like like, and not like you know, obviously it's not my event, but um, yeah. people want to know me, people want to speak to me, people recognize me and different shit. Like I was the nigga that was trying to creep through the joint, like yeah, you know I mean, like yo, can I, yo, what's up? Hey, I'm Armani White. I do yeah. that, like, and so for me to now be at the event and niggas walk up. Yo, you killing shit, bro. I'm proud of you. Yo, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and, and yeah. so for me to be that person that people don't have to um, introduce themselves. I mean, mm-hmm. that I don't have to introduce myself to everybody, and and, and and people don't have to like brush past me and not know who I am. It's it's new. It's a new experience. Like, uh, it's not just a Philly thing. It's like we when we was at the Spotify event. Like, some of the people I've known for years are coming up to me. Like, yo, my name is such and such. I nigga, I know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I've been emailing you for years. Like, hey, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but it's it's. I think it's uh it's cool. It's um like you know, like I like like I'm I'm very cognizant of what's going on, at least for me. Like uh I like I got a lot of fucking streams. Yeah. <laughs> I got like I'm and I'm the humble, numbers. like I'm not I'm not the I'm not about to boast or throw it in anybody's face. No, think, but it's big because yeah. you grind so hard and you yeah. be like, Is anybody hearing me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You feel like you're speaking it like or putting your music out into a void. Well well that was the thing the thing was um for a while where I was going the the thing was for a while there was not this reception like I was in Philly I was you know I was living out here I had like a, 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 a I had millions of streams I had this much going up there this much like I was doing I, I played I don't play shows with Vince Staples I was on Made in America I was this then I did a show with Nas if that means anything but like yeah. like I like I did all these different things um and I would come back to Philly and they're like oh yeah that's a, 
Philly, 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 I would look at like who they were, who they called like big, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, I'm doing better than him. Oh, I'm doing better than him too. I'm doing better." And so, what, but you know, and what was the shelter and the shield for all of this is that I was I've been so comfortable in my own skin since mm. I was a kid that mm. these things didn't bother me. Like you know, for a while, like when I was a kid, mm. boy, Philly, Philly, uh, 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 what was it, Philly hip hop awards mm. and all that shit. Like yeah. when I wasn't getting recognized, it used to eat at me. It used yeah. to like really make me feel away, but. At the while, I said, or I'm Armani White, <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, and I'm in my own world, and I just create my own world instead of trying to exist in everybody else's. Mm. And yeah. so, you know, so now it's like, now I get the recognition, and I get everything, and like, and it, and it's it's great because I get to not only do this for Philly, but I get to just show other people that yeah. it's possible. You know mm. what I mean? And I get to show other people who 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 aren't getting that recognition in the city. Um, like well, shit, nigga, just take your own path. Like, you know what I mean? That's that's that's, that's that's my mentality because, and I understand it's hard, and it and it, it doesn't it don't sound like the easiest thing to do because it wasn't. You know what I mean? But it was like, if I I had to, I had to sit down and talk to myself, and I said, yo, if I go in that direction, the reward is way higher than trying to fit in in this direction. Yeah. This direction. Oh, it was some bumps and bruises in that motherfucker. <laughs> but I tell you one thing: the reward now is yeah. way higher because, like, you know, it's just it, it's 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 a lot of like like we just we just talking about the streams on this one record. Yeah. It's just a lot. It's a really big difference from like what a lot of other people are doing metrics wise. Um, and so I'm yeah, like I mean, like it, it it's kind of crazy that it took this long for you know for it to get yeah. that re- recognition and reception, but. I'm not mad about any of it. I I love it, and I love the fact that I I'm able to do this for Philly. I'm yeah. I like because for me, like when they see the numbers on these songs and they see uh, like anything that I'm doing is attached to Philly. Mm-hmm. And yeah. anytime I talk to Philly artists, whether they they blew up and you know whether they bigger than me, whether they they was bigger than me and like they not not doing it like right now, whether they never did it at all. I'm the same person. Mm. I'm yo, yeah. like you know, let's put some shit together. And if I like you, I like you. Like you know what I mean? Like yo, listen, I was I was with uh, I was one artist I ran to when we was at that event um, yeah. on Thursday. I was like, I just stopped the nigga. I'm pretty sure he had no idea who I was at the time. <laughs> yeah. But um, I think he, he. I'm pretty sure he found out later on. But uh, but um, <laughs> yeah. but when I stopped him, I stopped him. We, I was going to the bathroom. He was coming out, and I said, Yo, listen, I fuck with you, like above anything else. I don't know what's going on in your life, your situation, yeah. anything. I don't know if you feel like you're mm-hmm. not getting the recognition you deserve or you feel like you above niggas, but I'm a fan. And I'm not too proud to say that shit. Like, I'm a fucking fan. I love what you're doing. I believe. Like, I just like, I just, anytime I hear your voice on a record, I'm like, damn, wow. bro, that shit. Like, and yeah. but, I, but I told him that, you know, that's just, that's just the way that I am. Mm. You know what I mean? Just because I just think niggas need their flowers. Yes. I, think, I think niggas need to be appreciated because, you know, just, just and I'm not the person that just because I wasn't appreciated, I'm not going to appreciate other yeah. people. I yeah. try to meet everybody. I try to shake everybody's hand. Even if you did the littlest thing, like, I'm I'm really happy about these 30 million, but I was happier about 30,000. I was even happier about 3,000. I was happier about, you know what I'm saying? Like, when it was 300 views, I was like, Mom, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta see I it. think we got one. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and it's just so, so wherever you add in your world, I salute you. Like yeah. I like I appreciate yeah. you. You know what I mean? And it ain't got nothing to do with me. I just I want people to just I want everybody to win. Yeah. I want everybody to come up and just and look back and be like, damn, we built the castle. And then yeah. you said you said a couple of things during that period when you said that like one like you actually posted something today that said like you know you worked five you worked hard for years to be able to have this moment Ten and years. you should be able to celebrate this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you, you know your numbers, you know what you're doing, you have control of your future and how you're going to mm-hmm. operate through that, which is incredible. A lot of people yeah. don't do that. They don't know how to handle their business like you're handling your business, which yeah. is great. But at the same time, like one of the biggest reasons, like we talk about this podcast, and we we have people on this platform who we think that, you know, very much one deserve it, but two are genuine people and yeah. be able to you know talk about the things that they do and see an interest. Like we have no issue saying like even when I met you, I was like, bro, like I'm a fan. I like I like yeah. your work. <laughs> right, I right. did more research and I still like your work. Yeah, I'm yeah, let you know yeah. it's all it's all great <laughs> music. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, but like. To be able to give you your flowers and be like, yo, you're you're doing it. You know, you Thanks really so. are a voice. You very much you, like forget the streams. We was gonna have you on here and talk about it regardless. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Thanks like so, we wanted yeah. to make sure that we could express your art and talk about your mm-hmm. journey and the things that you've come through. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah, cause e- we we be curious about people's creative journey. Like, how do you do what you do? Because it's like, man, people people who like they always say p- people who can do and people who don't mm-hmm. teach. They say that like a lot. 
Um, but I mean, teachers, that's, that's undervaluing teachers, but people who aren't creatives don't know how naked it feels mm-hmm. to put your stuff out there, to put yourself out there. And, and cause it's all about reception. You know what I mean? Cause mm-hmm. if not, you would just do music and you, only your family would hear it. Yeah. But yeah, to yeah. release it for everybody, it's hard. So we'd be like, well, how do you push past? How do you face fear? How do you, when people don't like it, how do mm-hmm. you bounce mm-hmm. back? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's, the thing is, you never strike out. Only time you strike out is when you stop swinging. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so if you fuck up, if you take an L, if like you know what I'm saying, if that shit, that shit was ass, whatever. Like, it only matters if you stop swinging. Yep. If that was the, if you if you let that one L discourage you so much that you just said I'm not doing it anymore, that's when you lost. Like you could, you always in a position to bounce back. Mm-hmm. Always, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. And then like, and so I think people have to understand, recognize, and realize that like um. Um, yeah, like because we all, especially in rap music, it's a facade. It's this idea that everybody is so put together, that everything is perfect all the yeah. time, that everybody's doing great. Like, nigga, this Billie Eilish shit was hell. Like, mm. <laughs> and that's the reason why I'm so happy. That's the reason why I'm so proud. That's the reason why I, I walk around with my trophies is because I it just in the past five months, five six months, like I, I I made jokes about it on social media, but I was like I was sleeping in a hallway. Like I was, wow. I was, it, I was sleeping in the hallway. I got an eviction notice because all you know, and all my money had went towards getting this damn song mm-hmm. cleared, put, putting a video out. Like all, all of, you know, I, I spent like fifty thousand dollars just to get this shit going. It was hell that I was going through, mm-hmm. and then every day I'm waking up. I got ten year olds. Man, drop the fucking song. I hate you. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Like you know what? It's over. You missed it. Your hype, your hype is going. The window is closed. Like all this shit. And I'm like. Bro, it was it was real life. Like I'm just you know I'm battling, pushing, pulling. This yeah. label's calling, that yeah. label's calling, and this and that. And that. It was hell. So mm-hmm. so, I like people don't realize. Um, just because like you know I try to be as open as about it, but mm-hmm. every other artist is like you know it's it's the chains, it's the shine, it's, the, rich. it's the yeah, it's the watches, it's the you know yeah, it's we doing great. Niggas ain't doing great. Mm-hmm. Like mentally, emotionally, mm-hmm. whatever it is, it, niggas it. ain't doing great. So. Um, we all we all feel like we can't. We all almost feel like we're the only ones mm. experiencing what we experience. Like because everybody else who's experiencing it, it is not saying it. Mm-hmm. So we all feeling like you know. But it, I think yeah, like like we we everybody, bro. Every time you drop a fucking song, that shit kind of scary, low key. You be like, ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how they gonna take this? <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's 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 not. You know, it, it, nobody's nobody walks into it like, oh, I know. Like niggas ask me, yo, you, did you know this was gonna be a hit? I'm like, yeah, but I, I knew I knew it was gonna be a hit because I was gonna push it until it was. Mm. I was going I was gonna work until it was gonna be a hit. But if it, it I didn't know if when I dropped this shit, if it was gonna. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if that shit was going to click with everybody, if it was going to connect, if I or like I, I started believing the little niggas, I was like, damn, I really done missed the hype. Like, Not the ten know. year olds. Yeah, right. Yeah, I was like, damn, these ten years dictated my fucking career. It, yeah. it won't be the first time you've seen that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, uh, yeah, like like I think I just think you know like we we need we we somewhat need you know sometimes need some people that are a little bit more vulnerable and we don't got to call them like some bitch ass niggas or like yeah. mm-hmm. nut, like that you know what i mean like wallow was on there crying when he met Sampa. like yeah. you know what i mean like, big like deal. and and we don't we don't we need more of that where we don't just be like oh that's nut ass nigga like we yeah he doing that shit like that because yeah like we we have authentic moments we yes. have authentic moments and we work hard and we like you know we strive for this shit like i like i i they they call me they like nigga you did 20 mil on one streaming platform in a month, and a, probably in another month or two, you gonna get a gold record. Yeah, I'm gonna ball my fucking eyes out <laughs> when that gold record come in. Ain't Hell no, ain't yeah. no shame sure. in it. Or nothing. It's gonna be tears on that goddamn gold, yeah. gold record because I worked for it. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? And so, so I, yeah, I think, I think it, it's not not just so much of like we need these vulnerable figures. We we do. Yes. But we also need to just understand that even if we don't have it. Mm. Man, this shit is, it ain't as sweet as niggas is lying about it on their Instagram stories. Like, we see that shit. You be at the club, motherfucker, yeah. post up, hey, and they just put it right back down. Like, that, <laughs> that's niggas' careers. Niggas' careers Hell get up, yeah. they get up there, they put this jewelry on that they don't own. Ah. No, for real. <laughs> you, you shit don't be on, good. You touched on a, a real good point. Like, so, label wise, are you on a label? Are you independent? No, independent. Well, we talking, we having a conversation. Yeah, okay. Right? Because you you said one word that was so important. You said well two words. Work it. 
like people don't understand that's the difference of everything when you have a label versus being independent mm -hmm. and a lot of independent artists do not work that one single enough and yeah. the label is going to work it they exhausted the marketing they work it to i mean there were certain songs I, early 2000s it's like i did not like them mm -hmm. and then after we're you know all day i'm humming it i'm singing it yeah. because yeah, yeah. you can't escape it can't right it, it mm -hmm. was like everywhere on the radio they put so much behind it but um yeah, that's that's real. Like you put your own money behind it mm -hmm. and yeah. risked it all, and it paid off like greatly. So what I learned though is that all of these things is outsourced, label, yep. independent label, wherever you go. Like you know, like they uh, just go uh, to uh, agencies. Uh, yeah, it's outsourced. We go, we go to this marketing agency. We go to this 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 influence agency. We go to this like you know this place for for digital strategy and digital like just digital assets and shit like whatever it is. It's all outsourced. Yep. So I said, well. If they're just going out to people, why don't I just go out to people? Mm -hmm. What the hell am I like? You know, what do you need these people? I think I think people, the the problem is people think that their money is for flashing, and yeah. somebody else should actually spend the money on marketing and wow. growing their yeah. career. They're like, not not my money. Yeah. His money should be spent yeah. on marketing and growing my career. My money is for t-shirts and fucking and Balenciagas the and Mary yeah. jeans. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and so, and for me, it's like I never looked at my money like it was my money. I always looked at it like it was marketing money. Mm -hmm. I always looked at it like it was studio time money. It was it was the beat money. It was video money. Whatever it was, like yeah. none of the money I ever got was I like. Wow. All right, put it in the personal. You know what I'm saying? Like, where you going? What you doing later? I could take you out. Like, like I, yeah. I don't. That's you discipline. know what I mean? For a while, like discipline. I, I didn't have, I didn't have anything. I'm, j I'm just about to get my first car that I've had since 2015. Wow. Just about to get my first car, you know what I'm saying? Like I, like I, I just was like, "Fuck it, I got to figure it out." Yeah, you know. Yeah. I, and then I'm about to do what I always do because he, he sound like oh my yeah. brother. Here I'm we like, go. What you? Are you a Taurus or a Gemini? Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Libra. Oh, that's different. They, See, come they, on, man. See, they I'm usually <laughs> not. Nah, they were usually say none of it. Judge your book by his cover. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to tell you. No, because you remind me of my brother Malik, and he is. Boy, that every penny you count, and he he's oh yeah, yeah strategic. I'm cheap. I'm cheap. I'm no, cheap. <laughs> yeah, just, just strategic. Since we were yeah. kids, uh -huh. I used to be like, we'd be talking about savings, and I he'd be like, oh, what you got? And I'd be like, I got fifteen dollars, and he'd be like, oh, I got two hundred and ten dollars. And we'd yeah. be like, how? And he's like, I saved my money. Yeah, and yeah, be yeah. Like, Damn. Nah, like, it, cause it just it, like for me, I was just like, yo, rainy day. Like I never know when I like. No, I no. did not know when my Billie Eilish was gonna come, but yeah. I knew it was going all last year. All last year, I didn't like like we made a little bit of streaming money, but the most of my money came from um I did this commercial with GoDaddy. Mm -hmm. I did this um had a lot of sync work. I did I did a lot of like you know just just wrote a lot of songs yeah. like on the on the background um side of things that was that wasn't necessarily in music, but yeah. it was you know um and so and I did a lot of like commercial work like, mm -hmm. like social, I was an influencer Dang. last year. <laughs> now nah, I wish we had a, more time. You have a team that, that yeah. like goes and gets that like the GoDaddy commercial. Yeah. That's big. That's huge. Wow. He's the team. Yeah. <laughs> my my guy Rob, my, uh, my he's my tour manager. But he, he play all we play all positions. But he um he got me the GoDaddy commercial. But all the, a lot of the other stuff, a lot of the other stuff, it was just me like going out networking, meeting people, or like or they came to me or however yeah. it worked. But um but I saved it all because I was like I don't know when my Smart Billy man. Irish moment Smart. happens, and I was like I know I know when it does. I've been in a position before where I had a song that was big or like that had the potential to be big. And I didn't have the money to make it big, mm -hmm. so I had to sit down and think like, who's my partner going to be? Who's yeah. going to fuck me over? Who's going to not like you know? What I mean, like, and, and it's just not a good position to be in. Like, mm -hmm. you want to feel like you want to feel like you got leverage at least like financially, yeah. where you like, I don't need your money, nigga. Like, I'll happily take your money, but if you're not going to give it to me, I can do this on my own. Yeah, you know what I mean? Okay. So what's um? I know you about to kill us because this is the worst thing. You can ask artists like, what's next? They be like, damn, <laughs> can I celebrate yeah. this? But like, yeah. what's your next big goal? Um, yo, I knocked so much stuff off my bucket, my bucket list, bro. That's like, solid. Funk yeah, Flex just played me. That's crazy. Yeah, he's telling me you heard on Funk Flex. Like, that's crazy. Like, but that was, that was one of them things. I was like, yo, we can get, like, we can just get it on. And I didn't even say Funk Flex. I was just like, we can get it on Hot 97. Hot 97. That would be crazy. Um, uh, my next big, my next big goal. You know, one of my Spotify goal is to get it on Rap Caviar. That's definitely mm -hmm. Okay. That's my Spotify goal. Um, but I'm trying to think of what my next like really really big goal is it mm, i don't know like uh like everything I, I like i was like before the end of the year i want to get a million monthly listeners i got two million now I, like, <laughs> like i like well is there like a um 
let's say, or for go a, a specific artist you want to collab with, or even a brand collaboration that you're like, damn, I love. Yo, I can get a brand collab. If I can get like a, <laughs> like if I can get like a cereal brand or something, just some cool <laughs> shit like that, like a, a a candy commercial, or even you know, I can even be do the do the g- generic Nike joint, yeah. like I, you know, I'll be the face of a Nike commercial for sure. Like, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, I think I want to go. I want, I want, I want this record to go platinum. Um, mm-hmm. that's like, that's, that's, that's really my priority. I'm going to obviously drop more records, but I want this record to go platinum is like mm-hmm. the, the, the goal. Um, I don't mm-hmm. know if that happens sooner f- or further out. Um, all of my radio things that I didn't even know could happen, happened. Um, that's like all of my, like all of my little goals. Um, yeah. Like if I, if I showed you my check, like my bucket list, like even the journey, I was like, yo, I want, um, like Zane Lowe shouted me out some years that's ago. That's beautiful. Like, and, and I was like, yo, if Zane Lowe could just give me a shout out at some point this year, that'd be great. And he was like, yo, let's premiere the song. I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, all right. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. So, um, it's, yeah, like I said, like, it, it's just a lot of, a lot of things that, that just kind of came to fruition in like the first second, first and second quarter mm. that I was like, yo, if we can get this done before the end of the year. Um, so yeah, uh, Definitely trying to go gold or platinum. I want the plat. I want the plat. That's the that's, <laughs> that's priority right that's now solid. to get the plat. All right. So we always have to we end up with this one. It's our rap, it's our rap question. Yeah. So you, we are called disruptors in the culture. Yes, sir. And we love to have you know our disruptors who we think are disruptors in the culture. But we love mm-hmm. to ask them, what does it mean to be a disruptor? Um, man, this is actually that's a that's a perfect pivot because. I think about uh, you know my ears have been popping for the past two months. I guess why I keep doing that thing on my face, but <laughs> um, uh, to be like as far as disrupting in the culture for me with this Billie Eilish thing, I went by the I went by the median and by the metronome for so long. I was like going to every event. I had to go meet this person, mm. shake hands, kiss mm. babies, do all of this for so long um, that I I started to look at the, the TikTok algorithm, the TikTok method and strategy, and it was like it was so direct to consumer. I was like, yo instead of trying to meet every single one of these people yeah. let me just make it happen and these people want to meet me and that's yeah. kind of like you know like I, I like it just it just reaffirmed something i've always believed is like no is not a no yes. <laughs> no does not mean no bro like that, that, that's your no until i make it a yes but no does not mean no um and obviously in terms of music not not, <laughs> not anything <laughs> else but uh, yeah. but in terms of music um, and in terms of like your dreams, in terms of your mm. dreams, when you want something, you just go for it. You make it make sense. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And so, so that's for me. It's like to disrupt the culture is is, is really just like, all right, cool. Look, I'm gonna take every chance. I'm gonna give every single person a chance to fuck with me, and then I'm gonna show you why you should have fucked with me. You know what mm. I mean? I feel like that's what I did with Philly. It was like you know, like I gave I gave Philly every chance to fuck with me, and. Um, you know, and like people, some people did, some people didn't, but then I said, okay, cool. I'll be right back. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and now we got Philly. So, um, yeah, that's beautiful. You know, um, I mean, cause everybody has their entry point, right? Like yeah. some people, they, they might not for five years. Some people like from where you start, some people it takes them a while, but then when they do finally meet you and get curious, you have between your videos, your music, you have a lot of great art for them to meet you know yeah. what i mean and mm-hmm. for them to like be like oh yeah, you know what yeah, i mean because yeah, uh-huh. yeah. sometimes you want to train later and you be like damn why i slept you yeah. know what i mean right, right, like right, i right. really slept well, but that's, and that's what i'm saying like i like i'm happy i'm not i'm not bitter about anything i'm not bitter about even with, with philly um bring using as an example i'm not bitter about the fact that like philly's catching on now because i feel like now when people say it, like I like my man, shout out my man Tom, Tom Flies. He was arguing with the dude at uh Philly Billboard in the comments, like, mm-hmm. man, nah, you ain't never show love and you ain't this, that, and the third. Like, you're not showing love to the artist that's actually making a difference in the city. Woo woo. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, because eventually everybody wakes up and eventually, like, you know, eventually we have to have mm-hmm. the conversation. But I'm glad they did it now. Back then, you know, you eager, you want people to fuck with you, you want people to fuck with you. But I'm happy you did it now because now everything is, you know, like, a, like what did I say before? A rising tide lifts all, all ships. ships. You know what I mean? He got it now. <laughs> yeah. I, I was still fucking it up in my head to it. <laughs> but, but yeah, like now it's like, okay, cool. I'm happy that it because a rising tide is lifting all the ships and you get to like, everybody gets to join in at the same time. I'm not the nigga that's about to be like, man, no, you a bandwagon. I'm like, I don't give a fuck oh, about no. that shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. better like, you should have, nah, don't. Yeah, nah, I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm happy that's at the beautiful. end of the day. I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for everybody to be involved with it. I'm happy, you know, like, because, 
they could they could have never got on yeah. board. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. Let the people know where they can follow you and find you. Um, Armani White, like the, like the brand, like the color. That's on um, all DSPs. And Armani Blanco, like the brand, like the color, but in Spanish. That's on all our social media platforms. <laughs> solid, <laughs> solid. Auntie Blanco. Auntie Blanco. I, I like Big the Blanco. AKAs. Big mm-hmm. Blanco. I like them all, man. That's that's fantastic. Well, man, thank you so much Appreciate for you know, coming me. through. Appreciate I'm happy we got this to work out. And, you know, but we're definitely going to keep up with you as you continue to grow. Yes, sir. And uh, let us know how we can be a resource to you, man. Yes, yeah. sir. Oh, absolutely. I got a whole list of demands. No, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. All right, guys. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, you could have did a lot of other things with your time, but you decided to watch this episode. So, you know, if you don't already follow <laughs> us, we're on Instagram, Disruptors ITC. And um, stay tuned for the next episode. I'll at y'all later.